Honorable undersecretaries, distinguished guests and speakers, colleagues and entrepreneurs, it's a great honor for me to open the webinar, Bahrain and Italy Trade and Investment Opportunities, with the presence of high-level representatives from both countries. First of all, let me thank Maglio Di Stefano, Under Secretary of Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Under Secretary of Political Affairs of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain. Your presence today shows the strong will to the strengthen economic relations between our countries. A special thank to the Ambassador of Italy in Manama, Paola Amadei, and Ambassador of Bahrain in Italy, Nasser Al-Balushi, for supporting entrepreneurs during their mandate. Thanks to Stefano Nigro from Italian Trade Agency and Ali Al-Mudaifa from the Economic Development Board, we have all worked together for organizing this meeting with the aim to give an extensive picture of the opportunities of the, of, uh, the cooperation. Confindustria Africa and Mediterraneo is the industrial association representing and supporting Italian companies with business interests in African, Mediterranean, and Middle East countries. It gathers large industrial groups, banks, small and medium enterprises. The bilateral relation between our association and EBD has started in 2017, when during an incoming business mission to Italy, we signed a memorandum of understanding aiming to enhance cooperation between Italy and Bahrain. Our mutual objectives are to implement effective industrial cooperation and promote the realization of investment project paving the way for stable and consolidated economic ties between Italian and Bahraini companies. Within the framework of our Memorandum of Understanding, we have realized several initiatives. In February 2020, we have organized the Business Forum in the occasion of the visit to Italy to the Crown Prince of Bahrain, Salman bin Ahmad Al Khalifa. During the meeting, seven business agreements were signed, among 3,030 million euros. Last June, in the, in the occasion of the web conference Invest in Bahrain, we announced the creation of Confindustria as Africa EBD joint desks to dedicated to the resolution of specific requests from Bahraini and Italian companies. As you can see, the path of cooperation is very strong and the link between our organization is effective and practical. I'm therefore very pleased that today, once again, we can share vision and identify actions with the aim of making bilateral economic relations more integrated and closer. Relying on its strategic position as a, a crossroad from the Middle East, Bahrain represents, as a regional hub, a gateway to Middle East's $3.7 trillion market aimed at attracting industries with high technological potential, not only in the oil and gas sector, but also in services, industry and logistics. Within this context, Italian companies can offer products, technology and services which are suitable for the development of Bahraini company, company, companies. According to the last statistics, Italy results fourth among European exporters in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the sixth place in the world ranking of the Kingdom of Suppliers, going five places since the first month of 2020. In fact, in February 2021, Italian export in Bahrain recorded an increase of almost 40% compared to the value recorded in the same period of the last year and reached 105 million euros. Consequently, we are here today to present to Bahraini and Italian companies an update on business opportunities 
focusing on a variety of sectors which will be discussed fully in the second part of the plenary session. Now I have to read the agenda of the first session of, a web of the webinar for CIS. The keynote speeches of the Under Secretary of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mario Di Stefano, and Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamed Al Khalifa, Under Secretary of Political Affairs at Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bahrain. A presentation dedicated to the state of the heart of the bilateral economic relation by the speeches of Paola Medei, Ambassador of Italy in Manema, and Nazer Mohamed Al Balushi, Ambassador of Kingdom of Bahrain in Italy. A specific focus dedicated to the framework of the investment climate both in Italy and Bahrain through the speeches of Stefano Nigro, Director of Foreign Investment Department of Italian Trade Agency, and Ali Al Mudaifa, Executive Director of the Economic Development Board. An overview presentation of the export of opportunities to Bahrain by Khalid Rashid Al Zaina Obe from Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry. A best case experience from an Italian company operating in Bahrain presented by Luis Aversa, production engineer of OMP Bell Racing Helmets. We will conclude this webinar with a roundtable moderated by Dana Abdullah from EFD, with three Italian companies that are opening in Bahrain, Eni, Foundry Ecoser, and Feder Salus. I am now pleased to give the floor to Under Secretary of Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mario Di Stefano. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, buongiorno agli amici italiani. Salam alaikum to our friends from Bahrain. Their undersecretary, Sheikh Abdullah Khalifa, their ambassador, Amadei, authorities, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really honored to meet you today in this meeting between Italy and Bahrain and our business communities. During last year, our world has completely changed and we have rediscovered the central role of cooperation and long-lasting relations among countries to cope with global emergencies. We have learned how pivotal good relationships among countries are and how far an already outstanding collaboration can go if properly supported and boosted. In this direction, the meeting we are holding today acquires an even greater importance. It confirms the very positive level of our bilateral relations and it encourages us all to deploy further efforts for their consolidations. Despite the pandemic, Last year, the level of our bilateral trade increased by 44%, with our exports growing more than 58%. The most recent trade data released in April show that Italy is the first European exporter to the Kingdom of Bahrain. I truly believe that the value of our bilateral collaboration overcomes the data. Bahrain is a traditional and reliable partner for Italy in the Middle East, a region of high complexity, but at the same time, countless opportunities. That is the reason why we have negotiated a memorandum for the establishment of a joint commission with Manama. The commission is not only meant at tackling economic dossier, but also at consulting on regional issues and global challenges. The outcome of ministerial conference of the anti daesh coalition, which we hosted in Rome on June 28, is a patent example of how relevant mutual interaction is vis-à-vis -vis common problems. The opening of the Bahrain embassy in Rome at the presence of your crown prince, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the more recent opening of the Italian trade agency branch in Manama are landmarks along on the path towards the enhancement of our relations. They are fundamental steps in order to foster the existing ties between our countries and to lay the foundation of further economic and tourism exchanges. On the visit of your Crown Prince, we could sense how tangible the interest of our companies in Bahrain is. Our entrepreneurial community is ready to cooperate fruitfully and interact with Bahraini counterparts. 
the seven agreements that we that were signed on that occasion by leading Bahrain and Italian firms for a total amount of 330 million euros are the most evident result of this bilateral involvement. These agreements are a remarkable tile of the solid mosaic of our partnership. There are, in fact, further opportunities to develop and exploit in a win-win perspective. I refer to the strategic fields of energy, renewables in particular, and infrastructures in which Italian companies are already active, as well as new fields of cooperation such as food safety and agribusiness. The widespread appreciations of the traditional excellence of Made in Italy makes Bahrain a promising market for our traditional 3F, furniture, fashion, and food, without forgetting the wider opportunities in the cultural heritage sector. A direct flight will represent a major boost to far strengthening our commercial and touristic ties. Moreover, and in particular, in light of the global emergency we are experiencing, I'm confident that Italian pharmaceutical and chemicals companies, and in general, our healthcare sector can contribute with their advanced and on the age technologies. There is also great potential in boosting the investment flows. Some opportunities have been showcased during several webinars organized by the Italian Trade and Investment Agency and the Invitalia in collaboration with our embassy. The webinar Invest in Italy represents an opportunity to highlight the central role of cooperation and long-lasting relations between our two countries, especially in this difficult phase of global economic crisis inducted by the pandemic. We want to encourage more Bahraini investments to Italy with a specific focus on the opportunities in the real estate, logistic and ports and life science sectors. In fact, despite the commercial exchange is very solid, bilateral investments are still limited. And we are aware that there is a high potential thanks also to the interest shown by the sovereign wealth fund, such as sovereign funds Mumtalakat and the investments bank. Over the last years, Italy has welcomed important investments from Bahrain, such as the ones from the already mentioned sovereign fund Mumtalakat, as well as from other sound companies, demonstrating the confidence in the solidity and reliability of the Italian system, the skills of our workforce and the competitiveness of our industry. We therefore hope for a sustained growth in the flow of bilateral investments in strategic fields, such as real estate, logistics, and in the sector of life science, biotech, medical devices, and so on. That are the main topics of today's discussion. My presence here proves the growing interest and awareness of the Italian government and private sectors towards marine investments and foreign investment in general. In terms of governance of foreign direct investment sector in Italy, I would like to mention the role of the Interministerial Committee for the Attraction of Foreign Investments, the institutional body entitled to support foreign investors, whose core mission is to improve the business climate and support the most significant FDA projects in our country. The committee also deals with reform proposals in terms of legislation and regulation in the economic sector. In conclusion, let me thank all of you, and in particular our embassy in Manama and our ambassador Palamadei, Confindustria Africa and Mediterraneo, and ADB for their strong commitment to promote new partnerships between our companies. I thank you all for your attention and I wish you a good and fruitful event. Under Secretary Di Stefano, allow me first to thank you for the kind hospitality that uh, we received last week during our visit to, to Rome and uh, to congratulate you on the success of the Global Coalition uh, Conference that was hosted by Italy uh, and to highlight the importance of the meeting that both our foreign ministers had on the sidelines of that meeting. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, buongiorno. Sabah al khair and good morning to all. It is my great pleasure to participate in this webinar on Bahrain and Italy trade and investment opportunities. I would like to stress on the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Italian Republic 
long-standing economic ties that were first established back in 1973 and have since taken steps to further strengthen ties by providing platforms for collaboration, partnerships, and shared opportunities. I am confident it will set the stage for greater cooperation between our countries in the years ahead, and is particularly timely as the world grapples with the fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to take this opportunity to highlight the successful visit of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to the Italian Republic in February last year, which marked a new milestone in bilateral relations between both our countries, which have continued to deepen over the years. Bahrain, as Under Secretary Stefano has mentioned, has witnessed the signing of a number of agreements between Bahrain and Italian enterprises with a total value of $356 million, which serves as a testament to the broadening of the country's bilateral partnership that will further enhance both countries' economies. And proudly, we have witnessed the inauguration of the Kingdom of Bahrain's embassy in Rome, which will see a new era of collaboration between our two nations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic challenge calls for not only medical and economic solutions, but specifically implementing policies and measures that help the recovery of the people affected, from small and medium businesses to large essential industries, such as aviation and educational institutions. With regards to trade, despite the pandemic challenges, the Kingdom of Bahrain succeeded and attracted inward investments in 2020 of over 1 billion US dollars. The Kingdom of Bahrain's capital, Manama, has been ranked as the fifth globally amongst all size cities and first amongst small and mid-sized cities for foreign direct investment strategy in 2021, Global Cities of the Future Index. Also, according to the latest Islamic Finance Development Indicator produced by the Islamic Development Bank, Bahrain is ranked third globally in the global Islamic finance industry. The Kingdom of Bahrain currently has more than 60 Italian commercial enterprises opening in the country, and the Italian trade agency opened in Bahrain on the 2nd of July 2020, which will further increase and help facilitate trade and investment opportunities between companies from both countries. And as we diversify our economy in Bahrain as part of our 2030 vision, we welcome developing stronger economic cooperation with Italy. Italy continues to be a primary trade partner to Bahrain, with 2020 seeing approximately 528 million US dollars of Italy's exports to Bahrain and Bahrain's export to Italy approximately amounting to $144 million during 2020. We see significant room to improve bilateral trade, especially in areas of investments, manufacturing sectors, education, healthcare, and financial services. And I am confident that you will find Bahrain business-friendly and the ideal gateway to the region. I would also like to highlight in this opportunity the importance of the cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the National Oil and Gas Authority, with the Italian company ENI, within the exploration and production sharing agreement signed by both sides on the 1st of May of 2019 on seafront number one. On this occasion, I would like to congratulate all parties for the commencement of drilling of the first exploration well 
in the offshore block one, which took place on the 23rd of June last month. An area of over 2,800 square kilometers situated in the northern territorial waters of Bahrain with a water depth ranging from 10 meters up to 70 meters. The drilling of this well is one of the most important steps in Bahraini and Italian economic relations, which will bring further investment in the Kingdom of Bahrain's offshore natural resources. Speaking of the manufacturing sector, allow me to mention one of Bahrain's biggest current industrial projects, Alba Line 6 expansion project, valued at over 3 billion US dollars. The expansion was inaugurated by His Majesty King Hamad on the 24th of November of 2019. This project has made Alba the world's largest smelter in the world by boosting its per annum production, bringing the company's total production capacity to more than 1.548 million metric tons per year. In closing, may I thank you, Under Secretary De Stefano and Excellencies, for giving me this opportunity. And I assure you that the Kingdom of Bahrain will continue to invest in the strong relationship between the two countries and will set the path to enhancing the Bahrain-Italian commercial partnership to even greater heights in the future. Thank you and over to you. Ambassador Paula. The prog problems you joined the platform, unfortunately, but um, I hope my intervention uh, you can hear me. I would like to thank His Excellency the Under Secretary of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mario Di Stefano, and His Excellency uh, Sheikh Abdullah uh, bin Ahmed Al Khalifa for uh, uh, Under Secretary for Political Affairs for your kind attendance, for your kind uh, presence today. I would like to share my deepest thanks as well to. Uh, Confidus South Africa Mediterraneo and the EDB to, uh, for hosting this digital event and all the, the speakers and the participants. Uh, and the Secretary Di Stefano has already recalled uh, many interesting facts about uh, our uh, um, excellent uh, cooperation in many sectors uh, and uh, uh, at, at many levels levels between our countries. Uh, allow me just to add uh, two more things. And the first element I would like to add, I would like to draw your attention to is the element of quality. Uh, Italy is famous uh, uh, for the worldwide uh, famous made in Italy. And uh, it is really a delight to see here how Bahrain deeply appreciates our high quality products and technology know-how in a variety of sectors. Machine, fashion, design, furniture. The second element is the growing bilateral trade interchange, uh, plus 30% uh, during January, May 2021 compared to the last year. Uh, I will not go into the figures, but I'm truly glad to share with you and uh, was recalled by the that I, uh, as for uh, was recalled by the uh, under secretary that Italy ranks as the first European uh, supplier to, to Bahrain. Uh, machinery is our main export, but uh, let us let's not forget as well the tasty side of the Italian export, which is the food sector, with an important increase that we recorded exactly this year. This, 
The idea between, behind this event is to talk about uh, not only the bilateral commercial opportunities, but also the mutual areas of interest for investment. And uh, this is indeed the third webinar uh, organized as a part of a series on specific topics. For instance, we recently organized a few weeks ago uh, a webinar on logistics. More webinar will, uh, will follow, but the hope is that the in-person exhibition will soon reopen and uh, some will be open soon in Italy. Um, I see that online there are more than 170 companies and I, that I take this opportunity to thank all of them. The Embassy and Italian Trade Agency Desk in Bahrain are at full disposal of uh, you all for any further information and uh, assistance. Last but not least, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank the Italian businessmen present in Bahrain for their participation. The Italian community is very well integrated in Bahrain and is very much appreciated for their positive input and their contribution. So again, thank you for your participation. I wish you all a fruitful webinar. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, Your Excellency Manlio Di Stefano, Your Excellency Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Your Excellency Ambassador Paula Madei, Your Excellency Dr. Massimo Dal uh, Ms. Dalal Buhiji, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure. Uh, to see and hear dignitaries gathered for a noble cause, which is for hope, peace, and justice. Continuous socioeconomic development is one of the uh, pillars of Bahrain's national goals, and undoubtedly that of Italy. All of us are eager to bring about a socioeconomic development through cooperation and creating opportunities for investment in both countries. Bahrain looks forward to be the hub of the Italian goods and services and the industries that entail the production of goods and services. And it has created the infrastructure for such work. Its uh, numerous economic trade and business agreements, physical and non-physical infrastructure, are the witness of such, uh, such a role, as it is natural to use Italy as the doorway to Europe, but we need to find the right way to do so. Both countries need to recover from the repercussions of the pandemic. As far as both governments are concerned, we are ready to create, if not available, all the elements that will boost economic benefits in a win-win way. It is in the hands of the private sector to work together and add national interest as an additional criteria for investment. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate and share my thoughts with you, myself and Ambassador Paula are always available to offer full support and assistance where we can. Thank you and all the best. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you can hear me now. Can you confirm? Okay, perfectly. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, the distinguished guests, uh, His Excellencies, uh, Ambassadors, uh, 
Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, all of you for this uh, opportunity. Today, in my five minute speech, I gonna focus on two main things. The first one uh, is to uh, go ahead uh, on uh, explaining why whenever you decide to invest uh, in Europe, you should evaluate uh, our country as a destination of investment. And the second is uh, what is the support uh, that uh, as uh, Italian economic system can provide for those of you who are interested to invest in our country. Italy is an advanced economy that ranks uh, eight position in the world for GDP. It has excellent human resources, great ability of R&D, and numerous former uh, international brands. It's not strange is uh, one of the top 10 attractive countries for foreign investors. Many, many reasons. Focus on uh, five of them. The first uh, is uh, on the EU for manufacturing. The top uh, country in the world uh, for jewelry, fashion, leather shoes, uh, and uh, this is probably well known. But... Uh, is probably not that uh, enough known uh, that we are uh, in the top also for like science, for aerospace, for defense. We are the first producer in the pharma production value. Second, Italy is uh, a perfect logistic hub, not only because in the center we have a strategic position in the center of the Mediterranean and uh, uh, a strategic gateway for Europe, but also because uh, we are uh, an open economy. We are uh, exporting, uh, and uh, this explains our nature of being uh, uh, a logistic hub. The third point is that uh, Made in Italy is uh, a well-known brand. Um, there are a lot uh, of uh, uh, ranking that uh, as uh, uh, for our brand, and uh, uh, and this is a uh, uh, for example one is the national brand, but it's not the only one that uh, ranks our made in Italy as the top brand in the world. Another reason to invest in Italy now is because uh, investors are looking to our country. Uh, is today the the CEO worldwide CEO of JP Morgan say that uh, is, uh, Italy is the right time to invest in Italy. Um, but uh, according to the Attic Current Confidence Index, we are in the last three years, we have been uh, in the top 10 uh, country for, for interest of the investors. Uh, last but not least, uh, we are uh, a very specific uh, uh, experience uh, in uh, the digital investment. Each tax index of PwC, we are the top country for investment in, in the for taxation, lower taxation in the digital uh, for digital investment. Those are all the reasons that we expect to increase uh, thanks to our uh, recovery plan that we'll uh, put in act uh, in the next year. We're an affair with the Minister of Economy and uh, with the Minister of Economic Development. Uh, and we su fully support the investor through the very beginnings, uh, thanks to our uh, presence abroad, uh, till uh, the, the, the end of the process. We support in uh, finding incentives, uh, finding opportunity, finding location, dealing with the bureaucracy, dealing with the public administration. And uh, last but not least, uh, finding uh, 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 opportunity in, in specific sector. Then the secretary and the ambassador already talk about uh, real estate, logistics, uh, uh, um, life sciences uh, opportunities, but we have also opportunity in aerospace, automotive, industrial machinery, green tech, food tech, and uh, many, many other sectors. Uh, we have office uh, in uh, uh, Manama, the desk uh, Valeria Accorinti. We have another main office uh, with our director Joseph Farigano and uh, with uh, a specialist, the eye specialist that is uh, Matteo Nesin. We are uh, fully at your disposal to better understand Italy and to better support your investment. Four times we, we share all the contacts in order to uh, better talk about those opportunities. And I hope to see See you soon in Italy uh, for uh, a great investment in our country.
Good morning, and uh, on behalf of the Economic Development Board, I wanted to express our heartfelt appreciation and gratitude to all the esteemed participants this morning. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of being part of the Bahrain business delegation that visited Rome in early 2020, uh, which was headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. And I have to say that we really got to experience firsthand the Italian hospitality, uh, the kindness of the Italian people. And what really was palpable at the time uh, is the Italian investor sentiment uh, that demonstrated a willingness to expand, grow, and look at rewarding investment opportunities in the Middle East. And we at the EDB are very keen to make the most of that. Next slide, please. Investing uh, in Bahrain is underpinned by three key elements, the first of which pertains to the cost of doing business. Bahrain has a zero corporate and personal income tax environment. 100% foreign ownership is permitted. And most importantly, companies can greatly benefit from up to 43% lower annual operating costs for manufacturing businesses, and similarly up to 33% lower costs for logistics operations compared to the rest of the GCC. What really differentiates Bahrain's value proposition here is that all of these incentives are prevalent and applicable countrywide, as we have no free zone restrictions. Secondly, we take great pride in the fact that Bahraini human capital and talent is strongly represented in both the public and private sector, and across all vital segments in the economy, whereby the government of Bahrain has spearheaded efforts, particularly through its labor fund, Temkin, to continuously upskill and empower local talent through various support schemes to make Bahrain is the preferred choice for employers. Additionally, Bahrain ranked six globally in the 2020 World Bank uh, Internations Expat Survey. And finally, and what is Team Bahrain's most salient feature is the customer-centric approach and the level of guidance that is extended to all our investors, which is exemplified by the easy access to key decision makers and officials and by virtue of our small size as a country, we are able to be agile, nimble, and efficient. Next slide, please. Starting in the 1960s, Bahrain actively uh, embarked on an economic diversification strategy, which has persisted and evolved over the years, aimed at reducing our reliance on oil and gas, and just looking at the latest GDP contributors here, one interesting statistic stands out, which shows that just 19 years ago, oil and gas stood at 42% compared to 17.8% today, which really goes to show the prominence that other vital sectors play, such as financial services, manufacturing, tourism. And we certainly foresee the technology and telecommunications uh, space to grow significantly as well in the future, especially in light of the kingdom's digital economy ambitions, and given the tech sector's accelerated upward trajectory, uh, which in large part is attributed to the global pandemic. Bahrain currently has $32 billion worth of inward foreign direct investment stock, which when compared relative to the overall nominal GDP of $38.5 billion, equates to 80% which places Bahrain at almost double the global average in this uh, specific metric. Generally speaking, the manufacturing sector focus for Bahrain centers predominantly around downstream and light manufacturing industry, given that Bahrain has established upstream industries in the form of oil refining uh, in the 1920s and 30s, primary aluminum smelting in the 1960s, now, specifically with Italy, we have uh, identified the main synergistic investment opportunities in the fields of fast-moving consumer goods, such as processed food, personal care, home care, and packaging, as well as sports goods uh, and accessories production. In addition to industrial services, maintenance, and repair, it is also worth noting that Bahrain is striving to cultivate the investment value proposition for high-end downstream aluminum manufacturing, which includes uh, segments such as automotive components and parts, automotive assembly lines, large high uh, pressure aluminum extrusions, and specialized casting operations. 
Uh, and that would also take advantage of Italy's world-leading prowess and capability in this important uh, segment. Bahrain is part of numerous bilateral free trade agreements, namely with the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council, the Greater Arab Free Trade Area, Singapore, the European Free Trade Association, and one of only four countries in the Middle East to have one with the United States of America. Essentially, goods manufactured in Bahrain would be exported duty-free to all of these countries, thus gaining a competitive edge in the end market. And manufacturers operating in Bahrain would also be eligible for duty-free uh, exemptions on all uh, imports of raw materials, equipment, and machinery from anywhere in the world. Next slide, please. Bahrain is strategically located in the heart of the Arabian Gulf and ideally positioned as a gateway to the wider $3.7 trillion MENA market, which is home to a 440 consumer catchment area, representing 4% of the global GDP. The GCC in turn represents 43% of the MENA market GDP and Bahrain's King Fahad Causeway provides one of the fastest and most efficient access points to 75% of the Saudi market within a 24-hour lead time period. Now, unsurprisingly, with Italy being one of the leading economies globally and certainly one of the most prominent export-oriented uh, manufacturers in the EU, strong bilateral commercial relations have always characterized the trade ties between Bahrain and Italy, whereby ever since 2018, we have witnessed an increase in non-oil trade by almost 23%. Additionally, non-oil trade has amounted to 660 million U.S. dollars in 2020. We are very optimistic that we will continue to see sustained uh, growth here in the years ahead. Next slide, please. The government uh, of Bahrain invested very heavily uh, many years ago in providing dedicated investment infrastructure aimed at attracting and accommodating reputable global operators in the field of manufacturing and logistics. Uh, what is illustrated here is essentially an elevated view of uh, Salman Industrial City, which is based on the northeastern side of Bahrain and home to the Bahrain International Investment Park and the Bahrain Logistics Zone, both of which are in very close proximity to the logistics processing and clearing centers, uh, be it the seaport, airport, and direct causeway linking Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As it stands today and since inception, the Bahrain International Investment Park is home to over $2 billion worth of investments, 81% of which are inward international investments comprised of over 111 manufacturing companies that have created over 5,000 jobs till date. Uh, the investment park is home to companies like Mondelez, BSF, uh, Racket Ben Kaiser, Arla, and many others. Next slide, please. In terms of inward Italian investments into Bahrain, we are very proud to be home to over 185 Italian companies currently registered in the kingdom, over 30 of which are actually operating in the industrial sector. Some notable names and key highlights include the likes of Ariston Thermo, OMP Bell Racing Helmets, Pramac, uh, Fata, uh, Florsed, Leonardo, and, and others. I am very pleased to see that we will be getting more insights from OMP Bell Racing Helmets as well, uh, as well as ENI later in this webinar uh, to shed light on their Bahrain experience. Next slide, please. The manufacturing sector is well developed in Bahrain and mature with our future strategy aimed at making Bahrain a conducive investment destination for emerging and increasingly important sectors such as renewable energy, uh, solar energy, high tech and industry 4.0 solutions as well as a more recent focus on developing the primary food and food security sector in Bahrain, particularly in the fields of agriculture, aquaculture, and poultry, to increase Bahrain's self-sufficiency capabilities. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, the Bahrain Economic Development Board is very keen to engage with Italian industries and investors whereby we act as the main interface to help with the provision of information, business case support, and investment validation, matchmaking, support with the incorporation, licensing, and setup, 
and we strive to maintain an ongoing relationship with our investors as part of an overarching aftercare program to ensure that your businesses not only make the most informed decisions possible, but also to encourage scalability and growth. And with that, you can find the contacts of my colleagues, Dalal Buhajji, who heads the investment origination team, as well as uh, Amr Buhsein, who specifically overlooks all activity in the Italian market. Thank you very much and happy to take any questions later on in the webinar. Thank you. Hello, um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? I can answer. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, come in here to elaborate on one or two things that maybe un some people aren't aware of, uh, and add on to what has just been said uh, already. Bahrain is already a very good investor, uh, and was and still is in, in Italy. Uh, just to remind you, we have uh, an Invesco bank. We have uh, invested earlier on in uh, Gucci. We, brought, we bought Gucci. Uh, we added value, and we sold it after making it revive as a, an international brand. Uh, we bought Riva boats, Ferretti boats, and again, we launched it as a bigger and stronger company. We do still have, in Invesco, other uh, major companies, uh, three companies, uh, and we are going to do exactly the same thing with them uh, in the future. The point I want to uh, emphasize, uh, the, the past investment of InvestCorp so far is approaching $1 billion. $1 billion we, have invest, we are investing now in, 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 the, uh, in Italy. Uh, the points I want to raise and emphasize uh, is downstreaming from Bahrain Prime Industries. It has been touched upon uh, earlier, but as an industrialist myself, uh, I would like to emphasize that Bahrain has three major prime industries, aluminum, petrochemicals, and iron. And we want to take, uh, we want the Italian companies to come into Bahrain and take advantage of liquid aluminum petrochemical and iron stocks, readily available for Italian technology partners at extremely competitive cost. Bahrain is looking forward to technology partners to downstream its prime industries locally here. Uh, why do you want to invest in prime industries in Bahrain? Because it will open for you new markets in the world. Uh, if you receive aluminium liquid, you are actually saving 40% of your cost if you had done the same job in Europe. 40% of your cost. And out of Bahrain, you can ship your end products to everywhere in the world uh, at 30% at, uh, of the cost of the the, the uh, shipping other, uh, the other way from Europe or from the United States to Bahrain. Because all these containers that come to the Gulf, they leave empty. And this is why, for example, in Midal cables, we've been very successful in exporting our goods to Europe, to the United States, to Africa, to other countries in the world, Southeast Asia, to Korea. Our market in the world is very important to us, and if it hadn't been for the opportunity to downstream of aluminium, we would not have been able to acquire, uh, to, to ship 20% of our production to the United States. We wouldn't have been able to do all the electricity uh, grid in the UK and in Germany 
from Wales, from Scotland to Wales, from uh, Hamburg to Bavaria. Uh, we were competitive because uh, we were able to take advantage of dance training, in spite of the tax that we have to pay in Europe because we don't have a free trade agreement yet. Uh, so I thoroughly recommend that Italians who have uh, ambition not only to sell uh, at a better competitive rate, to come and consider downstreaming those, alumini uh, those three major uh, prime industries in Bahrain, downstream, downstreaming here will open for them fresh markets that they aren't able to reach out of Europe. Uh, I would uh, say that the Italians are also welcome here to do business, to do trade, to sell their fine cars, to sell their fashion. All of this is very important to us. And Bahrain being a center of shopping for families who come to visit Bahrain opens very large markets for them here. We welcome you to Bahrain, and if we can do anything to support you, we as the Chamber uh, are very happy to support you all, all the way along. Thank you. Hello, good morning to everyone. Uh, I am Luis Aversa, uh, Production Director at uh, Bear Racing uh, Elements International. And uh, first of all, part of OMP and Bell Group, I would like to thank uh, the Italian Trade Agency and the ADB um, Bahrain for inviting us uh, to this interesting webinar between Italy and Bahrain. Um, Bell is an historical and legendary brand in motorsport. By the end of 2019, um, Bell merged with another historical brand of safety device for motorsport, OMP. Today, OMP and Bell represent the biggest group in the world for safety devices in motorsport. The group produces and distributes its products worldwide, and our products, is, uh, our products are present in 75 different countries. We have three production centers, seven uh, locations, six showrooms, and three R&D departments between Middle East, Europe, and America. The group comes with uh, 330 employees coming from 29 different nationalities. The two main representative nationalities are the Italian with about 110 employees, followed by the Bahrainis with about 55 employees. Approximately 40% of the group is represented by women. In 2015, Bell decided to move his wool manufacturing in Bahrain. Early 2016, the first helmet 100% produced in Bahrain were in the market. Bell not only moved his manufacturing, but as well decided to move in Bahrain the managerial headquarters and the R&D department. That is an essential function for our organization. Today, the factory located in Sakir, close to the international Bahrain circuit, has 250 employees and uh, has a manufacturing capability of 35,000 racing helmets per year and 40,000 and has scale replica helmet. The last mentioned product replicates the design of our most popular drivers. These mini helmets are loved by thousands of uh, collectors worldwide, and each one of them will receive his mini helmet in a box with the logo made in Bahrain. The same is for all our racing helmets, and we are proud to have the made in Bahrain logo on our packaging. Being a manufacturing in Bahrain, especially for a complex business as ours, guarantees uh, several advantages. I will just mention some of them. Bahrain is geographically located in the middle of the world. If we look at a map, it's an evident fact. This factor permits that the transit time of goods from Far East, Europe, or North America is quite short. This is a strong key factor for the world supply chain. Just to give some numbers, 50% of our raw material are purchasing local, 40% from East and Far East, 40% is coming from Europe, and 5% from USA. Being Bahrain a small island, wherever it will be the manufacturing plant, it will be fast and well served by the Khalifa bin Salman port. From the custom clearance till the receipt of goods in the warehouse, 
it will not intercool more than two, now, than two hours. As well, the access to the shipment by air is quite, uh, is quite easy, being the Murak Airport well connected worldwide and served by the main transport operator. The Kingdom has several trade agreements worldwide, and this is a great advantage Do we can have raw material in a very competitive landed cost. The manpower is available. Rules, rules and regulation of LMRA permit the companies to hire staff in a very easy way. The cost of it is very competitive compared to Europe and America, and the quality of the availability the, the available uh, manpower is pretty good. The government as well supports and facilitates the hiring of Bahrainis employees. We found that the passion and skill of Bahrainis, especially of the, the, the one of the young generation, is a key factor for the success of our manufacturing and management. Just as an example, over seven supervisors on our, on our production floor, uh, our production floor, five of them are Bahrainis. We see them as a strong pillar, pillar for our future. Last but not least, a great factor for our uh, kind of business is that we are located just across of one of the more famous F1 circuits in the world. And this gives us an important exposure in the motorsport world. All mentioned factors combined together permit us to produce a product of excellence desired by all the drivers worldwide. We can proudly say that the quality of our products permit us to have partnerships and collaboration with brands and teams like McLaren, Ferrari, Toyota, Lamborghini. The list is quite long, so I will stop uh, here. Our production capability is growing day by day, and, uh, and the, this is due as well. Thanks for the support of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Thank you all for your time. I wanted to thank our speakers for this truly interesting discussion so far. We are now happy to welcome any questions from the audience. Please submit your questions in the Ask a Question section in the bottom of the screen. And please mention who the question is addressed to. Thank you very much. I think we have one question for Mr. Ali Mdefa from EDB. Um, Ali, in light of the increase of exports from Italy to Bahrain, how can Italian companies leverage Bahrain's location to the regional market? And how can they benefit from being here in Bahrain? Thank you, Donna. Good question. I think. Uh... You know, apart from our inherent advantage and our strategic location of being at the heart, in the heart of the Arabian Gulf, uh, with a you know strategic positioning and linkage to all countries in the region, um, Bahrain has taken it upon itself as well many years ago with numerous strategic initiatives to improve our positioning as a gateway uh, to the biggest markets in the region. Predominantly, and I would highlight some initiatives pertaining to uh, the trade facilitation initiatives that have been spearheaded by the government, uh, specifically Customs Affairs and the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Uh, some key initiatives that I would like to highlight are uh, essentially the Mutual Recognition Agreement uh, that was signed in early 2020 between Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to implement and deploy a fast-track authorized economic operator lane over the King Fahd Causeway, which will provide many export-oriented uh, uh, logistics companies and manufacturing companies unparalleled and swift access uh, cross-border, uh, back and forth between Bahrain and Saudi. Uh, so that's a uh, key advantage. Another thing is the implementation of pre-clearance, which is now ma mandatory in Bahrain. So shippers... Mm -hmm. Uh, could be able, be able to pre-clear the goods even before arriving into, Bah uh, into the Bahrain Gateway. Uh, additionally, uh, we have, uh, back in 2015, established a governmental committee called the Bahrain Logistics Board that essentially streamlined uh, all entry point processing, be it airport, seaport, and causeway. And all of that collectively has resulted in a more pronounced and more compelling 
uh, value proposition for producers and particularly I think would be very interesting for Italian companies uh, to take advantage of setting up in Bahrain, uh, not only taking advantage of, uh, you know, a very uh, competitive costs, but also swift linkages to the largest market. Great. Thank you so much, Ali. So we're looking at very swift uh, uh, linkages to the region, uh, improved regulations, open regulations. That's great to hear. Um, thank you very much for your input. Uh, second question we have uh, for Mr. Luis. Mr. Luis, uh, we have a question. How did your business grow after locating your regional HQ in Bahrain? What has the growth been like? Well, well, we can say that in uh, five years, uh, when we start in uh, 2016, our output not, uh, was not more than uh, 15,000 units. Uh, today, we have a capability of uh, 35,000 uh, helmets per year. Um, and uh, the management recently decided to almost double the production. So we are uh, in the phase to empower our, uh, our uh, manpower <laughs> because we need to hire more and more. And as well, we will uh, uh, restructure uh, all the plants in order to be able uh, to reach the expectation of our uh, board. And uh, in the incoming for 2021, we really hope to reach a, pro uh, a, cap a, a full production of about 40,000 units to go in 2023 almost to, to double what we are doing today. That's great to hear and we look forward to seeing your growth in Bahrain and supporting it as well as the Bahrain Economic Development Board. Thank you very much. Okay. Unfortunately, we are running out of time and cannot take any more questions, but we're happy to respond to these via email uh, if, you have not been, if they have not been addressed in today's webinar. Moving on, uh, we will now begin the roundtable discussion. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Mr. Fabrizio Bolondi, VP, Vice President of the Middle East and Far Asia Region and Managing Director of ENI in Bahrain. Uh, we'll also introduce Ms. Carola Baretti on behalf of the CEO of Foundry Ecosair and Mr. David Matza, Vice President of Feder Salus. Okay, good morning. Actually, good afternoon here. Good afternoon, everybody. Excellency and distinguished guest, thanks for your uh, participation today and thanks to uh, ADB for organizing the, the webinar. It's my pleasure to participate in this roundtable session on investment opportunities in Bahrain for the Italian company. Today, uh, I'm connected from the regional office in, in Abu Dhabi, from where we manage the activity of ENI in the Middle East and in the Far East. I was in Bahrain yesterday. I spent a few days over there to look after our uh, activity, which are ongoing now. In the next uh, few minutes, I will try to give you a flavor on uh, how a major integrated uh, global energy company like ENI is uh, developing its presence in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, through uh, different uh, initiatives in the sector of uh, natural resource, uh, renewable energy, and the circular economy. Regarding uh, natural resource, uh, the cooperation with the Kingdom of Bahrain is dated back in 2016 when uh, ENI and NOGA uh, carried out a joint study to evaluate the uh, potential of the Kingdom natural resource, uh, which is uh, oil and, and gas. Following that study that the last couple of years, in 2019, we signed an EFSA, Exploration, Production and Sharing Agreement, to pursue exploration in the Block 1 offshore, which is almost a 3,000 square kilometer area. As you may have read recently on the news, we are currently drilling the first exploration well. Of course, all exploration activity is always a risk. It's not uh, by given that hydrocarbons are there. So we will have the result in, uh, let's say, a few months from now, and then we will evaluate how to uh, proceed further in, in the project. To carry out this activity, we are making use of our expertise and uh, utilizing the state of art uh, technology and even proprietary technology, which we are making accessible also to our partner, which is NOGA and 
habitat will have. Still on the sector on the natural resource, uh, we recently conducted another study jointly with the Tatuir to evaluate the uh, potential of the offshore block two, which is another large block to the north of the, uh, of the island of, of Bahrain. And Noga also informed that soon uh, these offshore areas will be offered for exploration. So we may expect uh, other international company uh, to come to operate in Bahrain on the, on the energy sector. Second point is uh, renewable energy. Uh, we already mentioned during uh, this uh, webinar today and a very important business forum, which was, I would say, perfectly organized by EDB in Rome. I had the, the pleasure to, to attend that. Uh, we had a bilateral meeting between the CEO of our company with uh, his Royal Highness, the Crown Prince of Bahrain. That was a private meeting bilateral between the company and the government. And after that, we signed an MOU in a very important ceremony. This MOU was signed with the intention to cooperate in the energy sector by facilitating joint assessment and launching new initiatives in area of mutual interest. And this included also the renewable energy. So we, we believe that renewable energy will be an area of particular interest for business opportunity in Bahrain, since the country has developed uh, the natural renewable energy action plan, which aims to deploy renewable energy installed in country by 2025 with a clear target of reaching 200 megawatt of solar and 50 megawatt of uh, wind power by, by then. And the signature of this MOU is also in line with uh, ENI commitment to expanding the presence in Bahrain while pursuing our overall decarbonization strategy, which is already part of the uh, company transition uh, toward the green energy that started in 2014. So basically what happened is that we found a right ground in, in Bahrain because uh, as ENI, we aim to support the increase of low carbon energy source in country where we operate in order to achieve our target to uh, zero emission that we set for, for ourselves. Lastly, uh, on the uh, circular economy, uh, there is something that is also uh, ongoing. We believe that the circular economy model offer a new chance of innovation and integration between the natural ecosystem, business, and waste management. So uh, we, uh, we believe, and then we, we look at what it's about, we believe that with this initiative, we can contribute into the progress in implementing the UN 2030 Global Goals for Sustainable Development. And this goal I'll also share with, with Bahrain. So in uh, January uh, this year, 2021, uh, the environmental company of uh, ENI, which is called ENI Rewind, uh, signed an agreement with Noga for uh, looking together at option to develop circular economy initiative in the kingdom of, of Bahrain. In practice, what, what is? Under this agreement, we want to identify and promote opportunities for management and repurposing of water, soil, a landfill. Because in our view uh, and in our experience, the industrial land, landfill and water, and even the waste resource can be reused and regenerated through state-of-art uh, engineering solution. As an example, the water extracted during the production of uh, remediation activity on the ground can be treated and can be reused in order to meet uh, the need of the industrial sites. And in this framework, uh, we are not only talking to Noget Tatwir, which is our main counterpart, but we're also <coughs> talking to the uh, Sustainable Energy Authority, led by His Excellency Dr. Mirza, which I had the, the pleasure to, to meet, uh, even if it's virtually so far. And we further explore possibility of cooperation in uh, energy efficiency projects. So there are working groups uh, which uh, are ongoing at the moment to look at possible you know, option in this, in this different uh, field. Finally, I would say on a personal note, I have to admit that I found an incredible and uh, favorable environment for doing business in, in Bahrain. 
my work in uh, more than a dozen countries in the world during my uh, almost 30 years career with EDNI. And I tell you that we really have received the full support from all the stakeholders in, in country to create the best possible condition for the success of the project we, we are involved. So really a good environment to, to start business and to do business. And to conclude, uh, I can say that we believe that with the focus on sustainable uh, development and the energy transition, uh, ENI and Bahrain partnership will bring uh, about a mutually beneficial relationship and the new way of doing business going in, into the future. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carlo Barate, and I'm glad to be here participating in this important webinar. I'm business development manager of Foundry Ecochair, mainly for the Gulf area. I'm honored to be here representing with uh, Maurizio Sala, who is today out for a surgery problem, but please accept his warmest regards to all of you, and thanks from him and me to be part of this conference. Mr. Maurizio Sala is founder and president of Foundry Ecochair, together with his son, Mr. Fulvio Sala, who is CEO of Foundry Ecochair. Let's introduce Foundry Ecochair. Foundry Ecochair is located in Milano and is addicted to the most complete production and marketing of consumables, machineries, furnaces, and technical assistance to non ferrous uh, aluminium foundries and cast houses worldwide, certifying all its items with its laboratory equipment and ISO certification. Uh, please see now a very exhaustive video about us. Qui alle mie spalle abbiamo una nuova pressa che produrrà tablets, quindi master alloy, di 10 grammi, a differenza di quelle che sono sul, sul mercato in questo momento, che pesano più di 1,2 kg, 1,3 kg. Quindi faremo delle master alloy fatte in manganese, in titanio, in cromo, in ferro, di un di una grammatura veramente piccola, 10 grammi, quindi cos'è il vantaggio? Che la dissoluzione di questo prodotto 
nell'alluminio sarà molto ma molto più rapida. Saremo probabilmente i primi in Europa a produrre eh, dei master alloy di queste dimensioni. area is where Flandre Cochere wants to improve its activities and its business and nowadays is working with primary aluminum smelters and cast houses, in specific in Bahrain, UAE, Oman and Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> in those countries we are open to find cooperative solutions. So we are open to possible joint ventures specifically in Bahrain. Hope you will help us and support us in this most important aim. Thanks for this great opportunity. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to the chairman and to the organizer. I'm uh, really honored to be part of this uh, round table in order to explain the competitivity of our industry. Uh, in fact, uh, Federsalus represents uh, more than uh, 240 companies that are covering the full uh, supply chain for food supplement and medical devices. Our uh, partner represents more or less uh, the entire sector uh, covering brand companies, CDMO, and raw material uh, companies. Uh, Federsalus is also part, uh, real uh, active part of the uh, HHPM, the European Federation of Health Product Manufacturer. The uh, food supplement market uh, in Italy is uh, uh, considered the biggest market uh, in uh, all the Europe. In fact, you can consider that the market is uh, 3.8 billion euro compared to the total European market that is more or less 13 million euro. So Italy is more or less the 30% of the total market. And the Italian market has constantly grown in the last 10 years. Um, the, main, uh, the main chain for the distribution of this uh, category, um, food supplement and medical devices are the uh, pharmacy. The pharmacy in Italy are more or less 18,000 and uh, uh, are the main uh, distributor, the main um, chain for this kind of product, followed by the parapharmacy and the large scale retailers. The Italian market uh, is, uh, despite the pandemic situation, has grown also in 2020, and we are seeing some uh, small increase also in 2021. Uh, the main area uh, for which we are uh, see, uh, seeing uh, important growth are the Munich system product and specific product for well-being and uh, sleep. We have to consider that the main area generally in uh, 2020 are the vitamins and minerals, uh, intestinal and digestive system 
probiotic and circulation system. Very uh, unicity of the Italian market is the fact that more or less 47% of the total market is supported and uh, by a professional, means general practitioner, specialist or pharmacy. In fact, we can see in Italy that more than 70 million prescriptions are based on food supplement or medical devices. This is a very important factor that uh, drive our market in terms of prevention. Prevention is also a very important factor in the next future to reduce the cost for the public health. Uh, the um, food supplement is also very important in terms of turnover for the pharmacy. In fact, it represents the second uh, factor in terms of turnover following the prescription drug. So the food supplement is uh, bigger than self-care product and personal care in the pharmacy channel. One of the key uh, success figure for the food supplement in, in Italy and in European market is the uh, innovation. In fact, uh, we can see in particular for the Italian market that mainly the 80% of the growth is done by new launches on the market. Compared to the decrease of the market for the uh, old product just uh, um, launched in the past years. Concerning the uh, geographical uh, growth, in our annual uh, report, we have seen that right now the main uh, market for uh, export for the Italian companies are uh, European countries like Spain, French, uh, Germany. And uh, uh, our relation have seen that the, for the next future, our main uh, partner expect a big increase in the near future for other countries like Uni United States, China, and a very important uh, place in our ranking are country like United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia that are part of the Gulf area. So we expect to also have a good opportunity to increase our relation and our business for in Bahrain market. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your insights here and thanks to our audience for listening today. As a concluding remark, we'd like to note that as the Bahrain EDB operates as a one-stop shop for all investors, helping companies understand the opportunities available and how they can benefit from the growing manufacturing sector and what the region offers, Offers. Should you wish to discuss any of these opportunities with us or have any questions, we are happy for you to reach out to my colleague, Amr Bahsayin, whose contact information is displayed on the screen. Thank you again to all our speakers and audience and have a good day.